What you're looking at right here are the brand new Beats Studio Pro. The sequel in a lineup that honestly I was worried Beats gave up on. It's been since 2017 when the Beats Studio 3 came out, so about six years, and finally we are getting a welcomed upgrade that has quite a few changes across the board while maintaining a really similar aesthetic, which I personally really like. But I've been trying to think of a different name for these, and I'll explain why a little bit later in the video. Now, I wanna dive into all what's new here, all the changes with these, everything I like, some things I don't like, but I wanna do that in four main categories. So this is based on where I use headphones. I use them when I'm working, being productive, of course. I use them when I'm exercising. I use them when I'm traveling. And I use them when I'm just hanging out, watching videos. Now, going through those, they each have different needs. And starting off with work, when I'm working, there's a couple things I really want from a pair of headphones. I really want multi-point connectivity. I really want reliability. I don't want the battery to, every di to ever die and I need to have good microphones. So looking at when I'm working with these, first of all, they do have multi-point connectivity. In fact, now not only is there multi-point connectivity, but these are also dual native. So Apple owns Beats, so it's no surprise that within the Apple ecosystem, they work just like AirPods. You can connect to your MacBook and seamlessly switch to your iPhone. You can change uh, toggle active noise cancellation, do all of that you normally see on AirPods. But on Android, you similarly have great functionality there as well. So you can get the Beats app, of course. They also have Google Fast Pair, and they work with everything else in the Android ecosystem. For example, find my device. But when it comes to actually multi-point connectivity, there is one little catch that honestly won't affect you unless you're a total weirdo like myself, and that is if you are cross-platform. So I'm using a Pixel Fold as my everyday phone, and my everyday laptop is a MacBook Pro, so I don't have multi-point between those two devices. But within Android, or in Android and Windows, I should say, or within Apple, you do have multi-point and it's, no, it's really functioning great. But another thing that is important is flexibility with how you connect. There are three different ways you can connect these headphones. The first one, you have first class Bluetooth with a surprising range. I can go so far away and it still stays connected. The second way is a classic uh, three and a half millimeter port, your typical headphone cable. And the third one, one that I'm really happy about is the USB Type-C connection. So by connecting these to my computer using USB Type-C, not only am I getting better audio quality, you're getting 24-bit audio on here, but I'm also, of course, I don't have to worry about it dying. It stays connected really well. And of course, when I'm working, I tend to wear headphones for a long time, so comfort is very important. With these, my ears actually don't get hot despite having leather. So, of course, everybody's ears are different. But for me personally, these are very comfortable. They have new memory foam on here. They have a new, really soft leather that, that feels great. They were calling it engineered leather. Let's actually get into a microphone test. So this is what the microphone sounds like on the Beats Studio Pro headphones. Honestly, after testing this a little bit earlier, I was more than impressed. It sounds so good to me. Uh, so pretty fantastic indoors, but let's test it outside in a noisier environment. All right, now here's a reference for how loud it is out here. All right, now this is an audio test with some really loud traffic behind me. Uh, these, these are the Beats Studio Pro and we're outside. So let me know if you can hear what I'm saying. Now, speaking of microphones, the transparency on here is also surprisingly good as well. I can hear everything around me. I could hear traffic outside. I could hear my keyboard click. I could hear things with direction as well. Like it felt very natural, which is no surprise being an Apple company. Like that's something that Apple has always done really, really well at the AirPods. And this is no different. Now, moving on to the next category, just relaxing, hanging out, using these to watch media. So with that, one thing I wanna talk about are the controls. So the controls are just a bunch of buttons on the left ear. There's really not a lot. There's a, a volume up, a volume down, and then a middle button that you can press once to pause uh, you can, or play. You can press twice to skip forward, three times to go back, and you could press and hold it for your voice assistant. Um, you can double press the power button on the other side and that'll toggle ANC and transparency, but otherwise, that's really all the controls you'll be getting on here. It's not customizable either within the app, so. What you get is what you get. Uh, there is an app, as I mentioned, it's a pretty rudimentary app. I'm, I'm looking at it here on Android. Of course, on iOS, you don't really need the app, but it's there. You can rename your beats and um, you can toggle ANC. There's, maybe you can get updates on here as well. There's not a whole lot you're gonna be doing with that. These do have spatial audio. Again, a feature that I personally never really use, but it's cool that it's there uh, in case you really want it. And probably the big thing that I care about when I'm hanging out uh, and just like watching videos or really listening to music when I'm just casually relaxing is the audio quality. So these have a claimed 80% less distortion than the Studio 3, but I mean, 
like, let's be honest here. Audiophiles aren't the ones buying Beats. Like, most people who are buying Beats are doing so because they look really cool, they fit really well, they're good for workouts, they have good active noise cancellation, but usually audio quality is not, like, the number one reason people buy it. They sound, you know, pretty decent, but I shouldn't be comparing them to, like, wired Sennheiser, like, in-ear. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think we need to necessarily do that. But, I mean, for the price, it, it's worth noting what the audio quality is. So, I listened to, like, a lot of different songs. One song that I thought sounded really good on these was Constellation by Dirty Heads. Like, I was just going through Release Radar and Spotify. It came up. It was pretty bright, pretty detailed. Like, the guitar sounded really good, um, better than the older beats. Um, I ended up turning up the volume a little bit more than I expected, and I think I tend to do that when I'm looking for more low-level detail on headphones. So they sound like they actually have a pretty neutral balance compared to a lot of older beats. They're, these are not super muddy, they're not super bass heavy, but they're definitely not airy, they're definitely a little bit more closed off, and uh, I, like I said, I wish they were a little bit more analytical, had a little bit more low-level detail, and a little bit more instrument separation, which was probably my biggest concern with these, uh, was that the sounds got a little bit jumbled together. It's really only there if you're listening to listening for it or if you have a trained ear. I think a lot of people in general are going to be happy with these. They have a decent bass level, overall not too overpowering. Like I said, most people are just buying these to work out, wear them on the bus, to look cool, whatever. They're going to sound more than good enough. Now, the next category is working out. This is the crowd that I think is going to be buying these the most, and it's probably why I am going to continue using these is for working out. One weird catch is that they don't have a water resistance rating, but a lot of headphones don't, so even though like you don't want to drop these in water, they should be totally fine with sweat and a light drizzle if you're if you're running outside in the rain, but technically they're not like rated for that. And speaking of getting things sweaty, the material on the inside is really easy to clean, that leathery material there. The buttons make for easy control when you're working out if your hands are sweaty, unlike other headphones that have like touch controls that otherwise just like don't work. They also stay to my head really, really well. So I have like three different levels I tested. First was just like lifting, so benching. They stayed in my head perfectly fine. I tried running, they stayed in my head perfectly fine. I tried doing burpees, probably like more of, one of the most dynamic workouts you'd be doing with headphones. And again, these stayed on my head perfectly fine. So that was more than impressive. The clamping force on here is really ideal where it gives you, in my opinion, maximum comfort, but also a really nice, stable, or secure pair of headphones. One small drawback to note for like the longevity of these headphones, as is typical with a lot of other headphones, uh, the ear cups are not super easy to replace. It's totally doable and there are videos out there, a little bit of headphone surgery and you can get them replaced, but they're not gonna like snap off super easily. And then of course we have traveling and commuting. Now with this, I want good active noise cancellation. I want a good like foldability, a good case, very portable, and I want them to look really good. Now with Beats, it's no surprise, they look good. There are four different colors here. They're a little bit more subtle, a little bit more muted, and I think that's making them look a little bit more premium. They also have some really nice accents across the board, like uh, the Beats logo, and up there you have a brushed metal finish. Uh, and again, that's still like subtle. You don't notice until you look close and you think, like, wow, that. I think that looks really nice. Overall, clean design. They're not gonna be like super bright red, flashy like the older Beats, and so it feels like more of a premium design. In addition, they do fold up really well, as is no surprise there, but other headphones, for example, the Sonys, don't fold up. So for portability, that's really nice. They also come with a redesigned case that has like a different texture on the outside. Again, it looks more premium. I think it's kind of a weird case, like it doesn't open all the way, it kind of opens like a, like my grandmother's change purse, if that makes sense. Like, you know what I mean? Those little coin things you squeeze and then like you can put coins in. Like that's how this thing opens. So not like my favorite case design, but it definitely gets the job done. It's just a little bit, just a little bit unconventional. The battery life on these is also decent, uh, but it was hard for me to test because I had this one kind of quirk with these. So these don't have auto play and auto pause. They don't have a proximity sensor, at least not from what I can tell. So when I take them off my head, it continues to play music. Sometimes if somebody walked over to me, I would take them off, I would get distracted and I would forget to like press pause. And so it would just keep playing through podcasts or playlists or whatever, and it would drain the battery a lot faster. All right, so I've been hanging out at a train station uh, for the past like 30, 40 minutes. And the ANC in these is actually really good. I'm very impressed with this. It does a really good job of blocking out the wind. It does a great job of, of blocking out like the droning sound, like trains over there and stuff like that. It doesn't do the best job with like higher pitch voices, but nonetheless, I am impressed with the ANC on here, which is no surprise. These are again, a company owned by Apple. 
and Apple does a really good job with ANC as well. But overall, I was more than impressed with these for travel, for working out, and many other use cases as well. But as far as what I said with that name, like maybe these should be called like Beats Tempo Pro or like Beats Vibe Pro or Beats, just maybe just Beats Pro, I don't know. But studio feels like maybe not the best word for these because it implies studio grade audio quality. And, and that's really not the focus of these. These aren't my favorites for, for listening to music with just audio quality, but these are among my favorites for working out, probably for traveling, because like I said, portable, good active noise cancellation, great versatility, the dual native iOS Android configuration works out well. I love the design and overall, like they have a nice secure fit. I, I would say that I like these a lot, but you need to know what you're buying. I think it's pretty safe to say you'll be seeing a lot more quarterbacks wearing these than audiophiles wearing these, which is not a bad thing, just a different crowd. But my question for you is what should I compare these to? The AirPods Max, the Sony 1000 X Mark Vs, something else? Leave a comment and let me know and I will make that comparison video. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Michael Bryan. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.